How's it going, y'all? It has been a minute since you've heard from me. Um, a long minute. And so for that, I apologize sincerely, but I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I'm pretty excited. Got some fun news to share with you, uh, which is I just launched my first ever workshop all about photographic storytelling as well as getting an intimate snapshot look into yeah, the ethos behind my work and answering the question, why do we pick up a camera in the first place? So instead of this, this workshop's not a technical one. I touch on that a little bit. There are other workshops here within Moment of, of some colleagues of mine that actually tackle that and answer those questions way better than I ever could. Uh, this one's gonna be a little bit different. And as you've probably known from uh, or seen in the past, like I'm, I'm, I don't do too much teaching, so I'm incredibly thrilled to have a place to where you can uh, learn from my experiences and the things that I've uh, gone through over the last nine years photographically, as well as teaching you and helping you grow in your own uh, photographic journey. And so a big part of this course is gonna help you to, to discover and find uh, your voice and your style uh, artistically, as well as answering that simple, simple question, why do you pick up the camera? Why do you pick up the camera? And so you'll see countless hours uh, of me uh, shooting landscapes, it's me posing my wife Madison and how I go about uh, portraiture as well as getting a really beautiful look into this all day environmental, candid uh, portrait kind of street style look with this ranch family in a small town in, in, in Montana. And so with that, I hope to give you guys a solid foundation uh, into how you can apply this to your work and your daily practice photographically. So here right now, you're about to see a free preview uh, of the course. Uh, we spent uh, one sunrise morning in uh, the Grand Teton National uh, Park in Jackson, Wyoming. And I'm very thrilled for you guys to uh, see this, this little tease, uh, which now the workshop is actually live. You guys can watch it uh, down below following the links in the description. Uh, I'm stoked to see what you guys think and uh, could not be more excited to finally share uh, everything I've learned up, up, up until this point uh, here with this uh, workshop uh, with Moment. So thank you guys already so much for the support and the excitement over this. I could not be more excited to bring you guys along on this journey. But other than that, I will talk to you guys soon. I cannot wait to uh, hear what you guys think. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it is almost sunrise here in the Grand Teton National Park. I think it's uh, pretty important uh, when shooting landscape to know everything there is to know about sunrise and sunset. Where is the sun rising? Where is the sun setting? Um, and then taking advantage of that information um, as you enter a park or when you're out photographing landscape because it's going to make your life much easier when you have to get up at 5 a.m. to chase sunrise. Um, so last night, we sh uh, the sun was setting behind the mountain range behind me, so we took advantage to do some portraiture, some more detailed stuff. Um, now, the sun is rising behind Niles, uh, and it's going to be reflecting and casting its beautiful light all over that mountain range, as well as these incredibly gorgeous homes and, and cabins here. Uh, and what's great is that we've shot this mountain range in three different ways, um, three different perspectives, three different subjects. But um, this place is really special, and I'm just excited to uh, see how we can photograph it. Look at that. There is an outhouse there, which is great. I might need to go take advantage of that. I think what's great is that there's a lot of unique lines and angles, a lot of leading lines here, um, than just photographing a mountain range. And this is why I love this spot so much, is there's a lot of, uh, a lot of potential compositions, as you'll see over the next... Um, few minutes um, there's beautiful angles of cabins of buildings of homes this beautiful pink pastel building uh, with the colors in the background of the mountain range and the, the the sunrise colors we're about to get i think it's just they added this fence here too which i think also provides a really fun way for your eye to lead through a frame depending on how you compose it so that's one thing i always look for uh, when shooting landscapes um, or even in, in street photography I was just a, a rule that I, I try to look for. I always try to look for those those leading lines within a frame. It really brings uh, the viewer th through the photograph. Um, and if you can use that to your advantage, I think it's, it's a really a powerful way to get somebody to stop and to digest a single photograph or a body of work are those leading lines. And I'll try to show some more examples here, uh, but I think this fence is one of them. Uh, it just kind of 
it essentially leads you straight to the mountain range in the background, which I think is just a really powerful tool that all of us can use. You just gotta be looking for it. I love this pink here, and there's another barn down the way that no one really goes to, which I think we should send it. But I also love this cabin, just empty right over here. So let's head that way. Oh, that's just so good right there. That's so good. Cold hands. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Look at those colors. Wow. That's really nice. Beautiful. Oh, oh, look at this. Got a few different angles coming in from the fence here, from the building this way, leading through. Oh, that is so good. Mm, that is nice. Wow. Oh my gosh, look at that. I think in scenes like this, when you have such a, a massive grand landscape in the background, um, being this the Teton mountain range, I think it's, for, specifically for shitty landscapes, I think it's definitely, um, a good thing to try to add something, some sort of element, subject element in the foreground. It, you know, just to have a, a barren, you know, flat foreground in the mountain range in the background, that can make a compelling photograph. And I do that often, uh, even on this trip, I've done that. But I think it's also really special and um, it just adds an extra element uh, to be able to add something in the foreground with that, which I love this small, tiny little outhouse. And then I've got these two solo trees in the mid ground and then I've got the mountain range, and then I've got the sky beyond that. So again, there's a sense of layers within that, that frame, instead of it just being a, sing, you know, a singular layer of just foreground, grass, mountain range in the background. That's something why this location is absolutely perfect. You've got all these little elements, uh, subject elements, to be able to play uh, with things in the foreground, mid-ground, mid -ground, background, um, on top of having this iconic landscape in the background. And the light's getting real soft, real nice right now. Oh, yeah. Even that, man, look at that. It's kind of backlit, but I still think it's, I can save some. But yeah, the warmth and the color here is just really good. Let's see if I can. See if this is going to turn out. Beautiful. Sheesh. One of my favorite things about photography and shooting a landscape is um, being mobile, using your feet, getting around, making sure you can give purpose or try to at least to give purpose to all four corners of the frame. I could have just photographed this shed and then the trees, but there's a little ditch with some logs here in the, the front right of the frame. Just by backing up a little bit, a few feet, being able to add that little sense of texture to that side of the frame, I think really adds to the photograph. Guys, look at this comp. This is a super this might be my favorite photo potentially um, of the entire trip so far um, got this gorgeous aspen tree right here most of it's green but on the bottom branch you've got the yellow colors turning but then I've got this shed just behind the tree and then I have another old cabin 
beyond that to the middle of the frame and then I have the mountain range and the, the, this gorgeous brown grass in the foreground it, there's just this is a really really fun composition take a few photos here oh yeah Ooh, and I can even get the tree in there down oh, off in the distance holy crap Y'all, this is it. Oh, never skip leg day. That squat, man, brutal. Wow, that's a good one. That's a great comp. I like the detail on this window here. This is nice. That's really good. Mm. Isn't that beautiful, Medi? Oh, this is gonna look good. I'm gonna go at 250th of a second here, so I can stop down to about an F2, F1.8, just to really. Oh yeah. Let me meet her for the mountains real quick, see where I'm at. That's it. I can't feel my fingers. Let me get a medium format portrait. I think this might be really nice here. Look up here. Beautiful. Three, two, one. Amazing. Beautiful. So much texture here. Hard to explain on when I know to go medium format or 35. Sometimes I double dip in a, in a similar scene. Um, but I know that this, this specific scene right here with all the texture um, in detail in the foreground, this is, I know that this is just something that I want to have on a, a 120 negative. Um, I think it would do well with 35, but I, again, there's no technical reason as to why I want it. Um, it's, again, as, as cheesy as it might sound, it's just, it's a feeling. I know that this would look well on 120. To have that amount of information in a 120 negative, I think, is, is something I want. Oh yeah, baby. Wow. This is going to be so good. Three, two. Also, I don't think the leaning does anything. I just, I've got my weird quirks and things that I do, but I don't think it adds anything to the photograph. So I just, the JG lean, the JG lean or the JG dip, the JG dip. Yeah. It's not worth it. My knees are going to be shot in about five years. Alrighty, y'all. Got that first light hitting the top peak. Oh, this is so good right here. <clears throat> Look at all these browns. That was the last shot on there. I think sunrises are a little bit more challenging in terms of just like being exhausted or tired or getting up, you know. And I think the light, I mean, obviously the light is just so different in the morning, but sunrise light is just super special. F, all right. Hmm. Want to walk down to this barn yeah. here, and then after that, I think we'll, I'll be good to call it. Nice wide shot here, I bet. Look at that! Holy smokes! Look at this! Look at this! Oh my days! Oh, wow.
Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. There's a few ways to comp this, I think. There's one where I can cut off the right side of the barn here and just include so that like the right side of my frame will kind of fill out that space or I can include the entire barn, but that takes up over, over like almost two thirds of the frame, which I don't like. So I think I'm just gonna get the shape on the left side of the barn and through the right side of the frame. I think that's the comp. Three, two. Oof. I felt that one. Beautiful. Look at that, look at that light. Look at the way it's coming in. All right, so the sun is officially peaked over those small hills back there. So I feel pretty stoked with what um, we were able to get here this morning. So I think we're gonna go check out another spot, drive, the light's still gonna be good for the next 30 minutes to an hour. Um, and so yeah, I think uh, we're gonna have some coverage of the trees back there. So I think that will pro provide some really nice uh, pockets of light. So yeah, let's go check it out.